Hello everyone and welcome to Automation and Beam NG Drive, where the Elegant Design Bureau, so far focused on rockets and to some extent airplanes, has decided to go the full Elon Musk route and get into cars as well. And to some extent inspired by the low bar set by the Cybertruck's design. <laughs> I, Unfortunately in Automation you cannot design an electric vehicle, I wish we could, it is all um, gasoline powered, no, no diesel either at this point, but you basically design the car in automation and I'll show some of that process. It gives you all these bodies to choose from and eventually I would like to learn how to import a custom body from Blender but we're not there yet. But it gives you all these bodies to choose from and then you can take the car that you design in automation and then import it into BeamNG Drive to actually drive it. Uh, the driving the car thing in automation isn't really great yet and it's supposed to have a career mode but it doesn't seem complete yet, so I haven't touched that side of things. This is just sandbox mode, and you can see it gives uh, options for the chassis. My goal to start off was a four to five seat family car, upper end, uh, we're talking about 60000 to 70000 dollars kind of thing uh, in terms of the actual selling price, and I wanted to make it as fuel efficient as possible given the constraints. And so here we are creating our new engine, our first new engine. I went with EAE, Elegant uh, Automobile Engine, and it's the Dash 100. It'll ultimately get 200 horsepower, and conveniently the next engine I designed, which is the EAE 1000, gets 2000 horsepower. We'll see some of that, that's for a sports car. I went with a V6, laid out at a 90 degree angle, and I'm just looking through to see what has the minimal weight. I want things to be lightweight and um, everything will have to be retweaked after I see how everything affects everything else. Uh, so I'm just getting some preliminary numbers here. It's very nice that it gives you a lot of feedback on what each setting affects. And it'll also give warnings when things are not working out quite right. I also had help from the live stream chat, which you see to the right, of course. Uh, for the most part, when I was young, I was an airplane person. Uh, though I did get into Top Gear, and I played some racing games here and there, badly. Here I am finally learning the ins and outs of creating a vehicle thanks to automation. And I think it provided enough uh, feedback on things. You can see we've got engine knocking, and it's trying to tell me how to fix that, and that starts to work out. We finally get some actual horsepower out of the engine. And now it's all a process, iterative process on tweaking things, trying to make the numbers more sensible. Aiming for 200 horsepower, you can see here, a uh, fair amount of torque. And I don't know what this engine test actually is supposed to tell me, uh, to be honest, but you can do an engine test. You can see 2.8 liters, 200 horsepower, uh, not the most efficient thing so far. I think we need to do some more work on efficiency. But it was good enough for now, so I decided to move on to the body and the other components. And you can't really tweak the body too much, that's why they give you all the, those options right at the start, because obviously if you could mold the body endlessly, then they wouldn't need to give you all those options right at the start necessarily. Basically, you can sort of tug parts of the car a little bit, but not a whole lot. And so you really need to pick a shape that you like to start off with. You can't just tweak it to whatever shape. Though, again, I would like to eventually import a body from Blender and that would allow me to make any shape out of it. We've got a lot of paint options and exterior uh, looks. So I could get the lights on. The method for placing things is a little bit... It takes a little bit of getting used to, but it's not bad. So, it's, it's alright, I understand the way it is. So yeah, I had to do some reorienting. I don't didn't really register all the details of how a car looks, and I wasn't using a reference photo, so I got some help from chat to remind me how things should be. But then I went on to the drive box, and uh, yeah, automatic, because it's just a simple family car, where it's not supposed to be a race car. Uh, that said, I decide that since it is sort of a luxury thing we should go for the full 155 mile an hour and set the gearbox to that and then pick our tires i wanted to get uh popular tires things that people could easily get not very special tires so i looked up what tires seem to be most common and then the brakes 
carbon ceramic is probably overdoing it. <laughs> so, but anyway, um, lots to tune here. And then, of course, uh, once you see what is going wrong, you have to go back and fix the things. So, again, iterative process, you go back and forth between things to see exactly what would be best. And here we go with the safety options. And then finally you can see the stats. We're not great on the fuel economy yet. Uh, perhaps pushing for 155 miles an hour with that kind of acceleration and a 200 horsepower engine is overdoing it if we really wanted an economical car. Um, but uh, yeah, I, we got a little test track. The, the game just has an AI take it around the track. Now you go, well, you don't trust this. Well, I'll show you in BeamNG, we can drive it around the same track. So you can verify for yourself if it does uh, well here. But we're getting a track time. So you can see uh, some of the stats. There's more stats. There are other detailed stats, like the price, the estimated price of the car. Um, unfortunately, I didn't show it in this view right now. And we get up to 120. 28 it looks like 128 miles an hour on the straightaway ultimately the track time on this track uh, was 2 minutes and 32 seconds so that's our benchmark if you will but then again it's supposed to be a family car we're not supposed to be aiming for speed here and those are the current stats you see four door all the details and I get to save it of course now we have to export it to Beam NG Drive and see how it actually works. I mean, again, I'm not going to trust an AI to take it around a track and tell me how it does. Though, frankly, the AI is a lot better of a driver than I am on that thing. So automation test track in Beam NG, as you can see, and the export process is really easy. It automatically knows where the game is. You don't have to like sit the folder or anything. You just say, hey, I want it in Beam NG Drive, uh, name it, one click, and you've got it in here ready to drive. It also produces a zip file so that you can share it with other people. So really convenient, getting from one game to another. I really view them as one game. I bought them as basically one game. Combined uh, during a sale, they're like 42 bucks. So I think off of a sale, you're talking about 50 bucks altogether. So yeah. Anyway, here I am taking you around the track. I had some problems initially because the understeer is horrid. <laughs> the understeer on this thing is absolutely abominable. And I also had to get used to, I was using a steering wheel uh, with uh, paddle shifters and everything. And I had to remember that this was an automatic. And I kept trying to, uh, on the initial tries around the track, I kept accidentally shifting. So, and of course it shift like to reverse or something. So that was not good. Here we see the straightaway where the AI got it to 128 miles an hour. And I get it to, well, a little bit under 120. And mainly because on a previous occasion I smashed into the right wall there. Again, that was due to severe understeer and I'm trying to compensate for that. I'm sorry for not showing you all the bloopers, but there was like hours of them and well, you should just tune into the live streams. So here we go. I didn't. I guess I didn't have the live stream chat up on the BeamNG scene, unfortunately. I will show you one blooper though, and that's coming right up here. And that's this horrible, horrible turn they have in the road, on the track, and these stupid tires that I hate absolutely, that I never fail to get stuck on. Yeah. You can't get off of them. They've got you. They'll never let you go. After a few times of getting stuck on those tires, I decided to take it a little bit slow around them. Perhaps excessively slow, but yeah, I had had enough of getting stuck on those tires, so eh, it is probably all right. So proceeding. Now the AI's time was two minutes and 32 seconds, and once again, I am not going to get anywhere near that. Here though is a bend that I don't take very well. Oh dear, yeah, it doesn't want to go. And after the final turn, we see that already I'm past 2 minutes and 32 seconds by quite a lot, unfortunately. And we get to uh, 
2 minutes 54. So I immediately try again, of course. And the net result is some improvement, some improvement, but not a whole lot of improvement. I'm sure if I kept going with it, I would have gotten down to something close to 2.30. Well, I could have at least solved that corner a little bit better. But yeah, it ends up being about 2 minutes and 47, I think it was. 2 minutes 48. Alright. Well, okay, but if we really want to take something around a track and test it, maybe we should try a sports car. And so here I set about making the most obnoxious sports car I can. In this case, cost is not an obstacle. On the previous car, I did not up the quality beyond a certain amount because uh, you can see the red flashing there. Well, actually, that's probably flashing because the engine is too big. It's a V12 in this case. It's too big for the space and I had to tweak it down a little bit. But it also uh, flashed if it was getting a little bit expensive or it was yellow, I guess. And so I avoided that on the previous car to make sure it wasn't too expensive. Here, I went all out on the cost and didn't care. So after getting knocking out, uh, we got to 2,430 horsepower. I would eventually back off from that because it had a lot of wheel spin. So I went with pink this time. So that's the body design that we've got right now. And obviously we need bigger tires. That's something else that I needed to tweak. I uh, went with a Japanese motif here with the license plate, inspired by the license. They had that license plate available, so I just went with it. And I named it the Genki, which means energetic, uh, more or less energetic in Japanese. So that works. So the tires. Well, of course, that's going to determine, well, part of what determines whether we can actually deliver the power uh, in a constructive way. So we need really fat tires. I learned this thanks to automation, really, um, how how fat my tires need to be and how much grip I need. And actually, we, we definitely do not have enough grip for 2,430 horsepower. You could probably guess that already. So, but anyway, it's, it's looking good. You know, we're trying, we're trying. And lots of tweaking has to be done. Ultimately, the cost is phenomenal. Uh, you can see at the bottom right there, the estimated cost. Yeah, that's, that's something special. So is the 10 miles per gallon. But let's see how it does around the track. I'm not showing you all the details of the design because I'm not exactly a great car designer yet. Uh, I'm basically learning from the game, so I'm not going to give you any hints at this point because I'm not even sure what I'm doing. But here we see I have aimed for 307 miles an hour on the gearing. But the roll angle is 1.2 degrees, which is a little bit worrying, and there's a lot of wheel spin still. Nevertheless, the AI gets it to 226 miles an hour, it looked like there, something like that, on the straightaway, which is impressive. Especially considering how much trouble I had with it in BeamNG myself. And overall, the lap time ended up being... We're coming around that final corner, which is a pain. Remember, the previous one was 232, this is 151. Now, they also have another test track to put it around with the AI, and that is unmistakably the top gear test track, which is also, I think, in BMNG if you want to drive it. And on this test track, we manage what kind of time? Rounding what I would call Gambon Corner, I guess. Uh, one minute and seven seconds. So there you have it. Uh, I ultimately tune it down to 2,000 horsepower to avoid some of the wheel spin and also uh, the pistons whirring out. And try and get some more sense into it as far as the roll angle. Try to limit the roll angle. Unfortunately, the net effect of all that was actually to reduce the track time. You can see the very past one in 51 seconds, get around in 159. So, more power is better basically. Uh, putting it down from 2400 to 2000 did not seem to help. I tried it again with more tweaks, 157, and then imported it into BeamNG. Uh, the pink is not quite the same pink as I said at in automation. I was a little bit miffed by that. I was not going for a candy pink. So,. But wow, yeah, the handling was fun, and actually the way it uh, accelerated was very uneven, I noticed. 
so that was problematic. I didn't actually get around the track. I kept wrecking. I'll tell you that right now. It was it was not a pleasant car to drive at all. <laughs> uh, turns out trying to shove 2,000 horsepower into a sports car isn't always the best thing to do. And yeah, I did not... I, I had a lot more fun driving the family car, but maybe I'm just like that. So yeah, uh, long story short, uh, I have a lot of work to do in terms of A, driving cars around tracks, because I don't have a lot of experience with that anyway, and B, trying to figure out how best to design these cars. But I will work at it, and eventually, like I said, in BeamNG, you can actually reduce the gravity. Right now, of course, it's full gravity. But I did uh, try out uh, reducing the gravity on one of its own tracks, and that was interesting. And I want to see uh, what it takes to design a, design a car for Mars gravity. Yeah, that's a special wreck right there. I think I made a fireball with a car. I forget if I've done that in BeamNG. Maybe. Anyway, uh, so with that, my first try with uh, automation in BeamNG, I was quite happy with it. It, it occupied many hours. And leaving it at that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.